Well, here I am at, uh, a day early. I'm recording the weekly video on uh, Thursday instead of Friday because we're going to be traveling next week. And I'm sort of hanging out in my room. I woke uh, last night before I went to bed. I started to get a little bit of a head cold, scratchy throat and whatnot probably from having way too much fun. Uh, so at any rate, um, I woke up this morning, I felt a little off and I've got to travel for 14 hours tomorrow. So I'm taking it easy. And I thought it'd just be a good time to do a video just sort of some of the stuff that we saw and did while we were here. Um, my wife has a lot more uh, information, photographs and videos in her phone. My, these are all from my phone, which is sort of a junky phone as uh, one of my kids is very happy to point out. It is, it's a, it's a cheap Samsung, but at any rate, uh, this, this picture here um, is a, uh, uh, a boat that belonged to uh, some uh, uh, friends we made down here. Actually, they are the aunt and uncle of um, one of my son's girlfriends. Um, their name is Zabane, and uh, they have uh, a, a lot of involvement in the community down here. They're very nice people, um, and they they have this uh, 39-foot cigarette boat with three 350-horsepower engines on it. And they wanted to know if we wanted to go out in the boat for a day, and we spent several days out on the boat. Uh, this was quite a fantastic uh, thing. It goes about 60, 65 miles an hour, uh, so we can get around there, all the keys down here very easily. There are 200 and, uh, I think he said 275 islands off the tip of Placencia. Some of them are very small, quarter acre, and some of them are quite large, um, maybe a mile long and, you know, a half a mile wide. Uh, so it really depends on, on, on where you go. And uh, this family owns a, a number of them um, for future development. They've had them, they've been here for a long time. The family's been here um, uh, since the uh, 1800s, uh, and they've acquired a lot of uh, real estate down here. So he, he had a lot of information about what's going on in the community, what they're doing, why they do what they do, and so forth, which I found extremely interesting. But this was their boat, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, this is the view going out of the uh, out of the inlets down here. They have all these little canals cut in uh, for boats. Uh, a lot of the people uh, down here do a tremendous amount of fishing. The fish down here is quite fabulous. Um, and even while we were getting on the boat, just getting on the boat in, in its little slip, uh, there were manta rays swimming under the boat, all kinds of fish. It was It's crazy. Uh, and the fish down here is delicious. Um, they do a lot of ceviche. They do a lot of roasted fish. They have a lot of spice fish. If you like spicy food, they have great spicy food down here. You will not find a lot of uh, uh, roast beef or hamburger or, or steak. It's not something they really, um, it's not part of their normal diet, but they do have amazingly good chicken and amazingly good uh, 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 pork. The pork is like tenderloin. It's, a, it's, it's quite fantastic. But at any rate, uh, th these are some of the, some of the houses that you, you're likely to see along the, the river. Some of them are, are uh, guest houses. Some of them are apartment houses that are rented by locals. Everybody gets along great. It's just a, a very charming area. You'll see sailboats and power boats everywhere. And, uh, and you can also see that my, my camera is going in and out of focus rather badly. Um, again, why, why we didn't shoot a lot of videos with it. It's not very good. And uh, as you can hear, there's music on the boat playing um, the entire time. They have this amazing sound system on the boat. It was quite fantastic. And uh, we had a, a, a great time going here. And these, these, these inlets go along for about a half a mile. And then suddenly you're in the open ocean. And uh, then you can take off and go where you want to go. And one of the places we went, um, was an island um, about 20, 20, 25 miles off the uh, coast here. Uh, it was a it was it was a, a day trip island. That some people go to, um, and um, I'm going to show you that in just a minute, and you'll you'll see what you're you're likely to encounter down here. Um, but uh, the, the the locals do a lot of fishing, and uh, they live on the water. It's a very aquatic area. Put it that way. Everybody takes water taxis and so forth. So it's kind of fun. All right, now let's. Uh, head over to, okay, this is one of the islands that we went to. We went to a number of them to go swimming and so forth. And uh, this is called King Louis Island. It's a little sort of a, a, a very comical little resort. Uh, there is uh, one of the, the Zabonet's daughter's best friends and their daughter, one of their daughters is seated here on the, on the right on the swings. They give us a little wave. And uh, this is the boat. That's Emile Zabonet there. And this is the boat again, um, just sort of panning around. The water here is crystal clear off the, when you get into these reefs. Uh, you go down with a mask and snorkel and you can see forever. Um, and you'll see sharks and you'll see manta rays and you'll see lots of turtles and tortoises, sea tortoises, loads of fish, coral, conch shells, you name it. It's all around here. Um, uh, it's spectacular. You can't see the mainland where we came from. It's too far away. This next door is is another. These these are other islands that are out here, and you'll see lots of lots and lots of these islands popping up, and they're covered with mangroves. 
and they hold the islands together very beautifully. Uh, I must say, even when there's been a hurricane, though they haven't had a hurricane here in a long time. And uh, one of the things we did for fun was um, uh, uh, Mr. Zabane's wife, uh, Elizabeth, is a uh, soccer coach down here for one of the women's uh, national soccer teams. And uh, um, she, she loves to go. And we went to their home for dinner across the bay here. And uh, after dinner, they said, oh, let's go to a soccer game. And this is the soccer stadium they have down here. And it, it holds a couple of thousand people. It was pretty full when we were there. Um, and uh, everybody goes to the soccer games. And uh, this, these are the two of the men's teams. And um, it was a score ended up being zero zero. And I said, is that normal? And they said, yeah, kind of, because they pl they play, as his wife called it, a version of uh, street soccer um, where th there's not a lot of coordination and passing going on. Everybody wants to score. That's really the big thing. And uh, like at one point, the goalie down here um, at the far end of the field kicked the ball so far it landed in the dirt up here. That's how far they can kick. Um, I've never seen uh, players, soccer players that aren't professional kick that sort of a distance before. But these guys have absolutely amazing um, um, distance in their kicks. And they are able to do curve shots um, from the side. So if they do an onside kick, the ball will basically go in a U um, and, and head right for the net. It's, it's, it's amazing. You, th you, think, you think there's something weird going on. It's just the way they know how to hit the ball, it, it causes it to do that. Yeah, so it's, it's this was a lot of fun, a lot of fun, and they had great food here. Incidentally, um, uh, local vendors come in, families come in that cook food and so forth, so you can get uh, terrific nachos and fajitas and all kinds of things for you know for a dollar or two. Very inexpensive, have dinner, and it is absolutely delicious, absolutely delicious. And uh, so that was one of one of the things that we went to. And then, um, lastly, one of the f funny things that uh, we saw when we were here was this. Uh, this sign, um, and, and this was a, a pharmacy downtown, a legitimate drugstore down the street from us, and it's Andrea Enriquez, chemist, druggist, licensed to sell drugs and poisons, and it's because the pharmacist down here, if you have an insect problem or infestation of some sort of bug or something, um, they can make the uh, insecticide to kill it for you. They sell insecticides, but um, if you need something a little stronger than that, they can do it because they don't have... Um, limitations on, on certain things, um, certain drugs and medicines like we do in the U.S. You don't have to have a prescription for it. You can get um, antibiotics just by asking for them, for example. And you can get some, certain rather powerful painkillers just by asking for it because there is not there are not a lot of available physicians for the locals. This is something they're trying to work on. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the young ladies that was on the boat with us, uh, Veer, the, the, the friend of uh, the Zabane daughter, she is planning to go to medical school and planning to come back to to Placencia to, to Belize to practice medicine because there is such a shortage. Um, and uh, a, a number of people are doing that. So um, um, in the pharmacy, you can get things in the pharmacy without a prescription that you cannot get in the United States. I'll just put it that way. And there's a, and there's a good reason for it. All right. So that's sort of that's sort of what I've got to show right now. It's a fairly short video. As I said, um, my wife has a whole bunch of videos and uh, I'll be gathering those up in the week once we get back, and I'll put together a much more comprehensive look of uh, what we saw and did. Uh, I just uh, love it here, and uh, we're already looking into coming back next year, if not to the same exhort, because this resort is going out of the management of the Hyatt Corporation. And we're a little concerned about um, um, what it might be like with it being run by an American hotel versus a local a local management company, which seems to, you know, you know, understand pretty well what people want when they come here. And I'm not sure Hyatt will be able to do that. So we're already looking at other resorts in the area. There are lots of them. There are lots of very good ones. And we're also looking in Guatemala um, and down in that area um, uh, to see what's down there. Um, just for fun, because there are some very good resorts down there that are fine to go to. Uh, somebody did ask me in an email, I want to mention, somebody asked me, is, is, is Belize safe? Because we hear stories about Central America, problems in certain parts of Central America. Um, Belize is fine. Um, is, is, the major cities, yeah, you can get in trouble in there if you go up there, but those are several hours away. Tourists don't go to Belize City or go to Dunguiga. Um, they do have, they're sort of, they have the same problems that American cities have. Um, but if you come down here and uh, come into the area, you'll be absolutely fine. Um, the police down here do stop cars. Um, they have roadblocks um, fairly routinely <clears throat> where they check to make sure you have your seatbelt on. And they do lots of preventative things like that. I'm going to talk about this for a little bit. They have they require you to wear seatbelts and they'll stop and check you. And if you're not wearing a seatbelt, you do get a fine for it. Um, they have speed bumps every eighth of a mile to quarter mile. 
all through the area. And these are significant speed bumps. These aren't the little things you have at home that are two inches tall. If you hit one of these going 20 miles an hour, you're going to tear the suspension out of your car. Uh, and the reason is, is that they don't have a lot of hospitals. And they want people driving slowly, carefully. And that's why they require seat belts. And that's why they have speed bumps everywhere. And you get used to them. It's just part of life down here. And the other, they have other little funny laws like um, uh, glass bottles. Um, if you, you're not allowed to walk around on the streets with glass bottles for one reason. Um, they've had problems with glass bottles breaking. First, they cut people, and, and then getting that person with a severe cut to a doctor uh, can take a while. It's not it's not like in America where you just, you know, you hop in your car and you're at the, in an emergency room in five minutes. It can be several hours. Uh, and the other issue is that glass down here with the intense sunlight, the sun here is unbelievably intense. Keep in mind, you're, we're almost at the equator. Um, when the sun hits the like a Coca-Cola glass, the thick glass on a Coca-Cola bottle, if it hits it the right way, it generates a fire. It causes the light to concentrate from the sun through the glass, like a magnifying glass, and you end up with fires. And they and they they uh, don't have uh, huge fire departments like we have at home. So they do a lot of things, little things that seem odd, but they're preventative for the good uh, the good of the people that live here and for the good of the tourists because they they don't want the tourists getting hurt or you know and that sort of thing. Um, so so it's it's a, there's some funny little things that they do, and they're more than happy to explain why. Uh, so that's it. All right. Thanks for watching and uh we'll be home we'll be home by midnight tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye.